Hey there! Uh, I bet you wonder what I'm doing here. This is probably not an area that you see a whole lot of because it's, well, it's locked and it's kind of hidden. You notice that what I'm working on here is something you may not have seen before. It's called a hope box, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Every week we're going to get together and we're going to talk about a mission or a ministry of a church. We're going to go into a room that you probably have never seen before and talk a little bit about what we do in that room and how we minister in that room. And then every week, what we're going to do is introduce you to some of the ministers of the church. Now, we'll always give you an object lesson, like today's object is a hope box. So whenever you see one of boxes like this, you'll remember about your ministry. But then I want you to remember that there's some people behind this hope box. There'll be people who will receive these hope boxes, but it takes a lot of people to give and put together these hope boxes. In fact, we've got two ministers today I want to introduce you to. Two. These are Miss Jenny and Mr. Robert Collins, and they've been involved with this ministry for a long time. Now, I want to ask you guys some questions about your ministry. First of all, what do you do and how is it a ministry? Jenny, can you help us with that? We uh, fill these hope boxes with school supplies, snacks, uh, toys, um, toiletry items, and some of them we put in a special made pillowcase for some of the children. Um, and these are made by many of the ladies in the community and many of the ladies in the church. Now you have a special interest in those pillowcases, don't you? Because you put a lot of them together. I've put a lot of them together. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Now, Robert, there's a lot of different things in those hope boxes. There were some toys, and there was some candy, but there were some school supplies. And did I hear there's some socks and other things in there? Yeah, you got socks, crayons, but I think the most important thing is we always got the gospel presented one way or another. It may be a book, like in this case, it's a coloring book. And there's all kind of ways, but we, we do these geared towards the children where they'll get a chance to hear the gospel. And with all these other things, they know that somebody loves them by oh. sending all these things to them. And how many children are we going to work with? I heard it was a lot of children in two schools. I think schools. it's about 800 this about year. 800 or so. About yeah. 800 children that yeah. we get to meet. Mm -hmm. And you all get to talk to each one of yeah, the children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great time, too, when we can they can open up and talk to someone. That is a great thing. Now, how does this ministry fit into the other ministries of our church, of First Baptist? Well, we like to take the gospel outside the church. We like to reach out to people in the community, you know. It doesn't do much good to hide your light under a basket and everything. We want to take it out to the community. And this is one way we can do it. We can help a community that's extremely poor. The kids are you know, don't have a whole lot, and this way it shows somebody loves them. Now, Miss Jenny, I know you're involved in a lot of ministries of the church. How does this fit in for you in the various ministries? Well, some of the children uh, help in packing the boxes, and also some of them have helped pick out the fabrics for the pillowcases and different things like that, and they kind of give us an idea of what children really like. Uh, it sounds like, Mr. Robert, you have to know a whole lot of stuff. What do you have to know to be involved in this kind of ministry? Nothing. Just be willing to work and come in. We've had eight out from uh, children to young adults, uh, college-age kids. Everyone come in to help. And it's, it's a lot of fun because we know we've, we're, we're doing something great to help a, a, a group of people that really needs help. Now, Ms. Jenny, but we what, do need to know the Lord. Well, tell us a little bit about that. What kind of things do we need? What kind of things can children do? Oh, well, children can pray for them. Oh, they can... Uh, make cards for them, um, different, different things that they like to do. Now, I know the trip this year was kind of put off because of everything else going on. When is that trip going to be planned? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really know. So is there room for more people if they want to go? Sure. We can have people from other churches. We, we have other churches that come now to help. Now, Mr. Robert, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about these boxes? 
um, a lot of hands have touched these boxes. It took a lot of time of preparation and a lot of people worked hard, but I think the main thing, a lot of prayers went into these boxes. The things that are in there are things that these children need. Uh, I think it'll help them tremendously. And um, having gone several times myself, uh, to see the joy when they get them is just special. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to realize uh, how they have to live compared and how thankful we should be. So by taking them something like this, you know, it's just, uh, I believe I get as much blessing as they do. <laughs> You've both been there several times and talked to the children. I know, Miss Jenny, you have worked in small groups with some of those children. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a very special uh, place in your heart for one child that you encountered <laughs> one time. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, he, he's been abused from his parents and uh, then he was bullied at school and, and stuff. And, and he was not a small child. I mean, he was a pretty, pretty big guy, so you'd think that he wouldn't be bullied, but he was. And, uh, you know, he, he just needed a lot of uh, prayers, a lot of spiritual help, and a lot of love. I tell you, that's the way it is with a lot of kids. And we don't know what kids are being bullied. So your prayers and your presence with them and, and you all's hope that you bring in these hope boxes are awfully important. One thing about these boxes, too, is... Uh, most of them are filled with people that donated items and our money to help pay for them. Uh, each box is about twenty to twenty-five dollars uh -huh. uh, worth of things inside of it, and you add, you multiply that times eight hundred or eight hundred and fifty. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of fundraising. What did you all do for fundraising this year? Well, we had the church yard sale. We had a percentage of that that went to the Hope Box. The church yard sale. Uh huh. And uh, we've had. Uh, a dinner and a show. A dinner and a show. Dinner and a show. I heard a lot about that. There was a friend of mine who was in that. <laughs> a lot of friends. That yeah, that was really yeah. good. We really had the whole community come out and help us fill yes. those boxes in. This is what that was for. Right. Well, I know those boxes are important and the products are, are, are very important. And the patience that you all had to put those boxes together. I know you gave a lot of time to this and a lot of energy to this. So every minister needs prayers. What do you two as ministers, what do you, what can we pray for you about? I think you pray for both of us that uh, this virus doesn't last long where we can get to see the children. Uh, I know school's fixing to be out for the year. We'd, we'd love to get these supplies to them, but I'm not sure if it'll happen this year, but uh, maybe we can get them to them for next year. And uh, you know, I just hope that uh, they don't forget that we've been there and remember how much we care about them if we can get to go soon. We have a daughter that's supposed to graduate high school this year. I think that requires a little prayer because we don't know what's going to happen with graduation. Yes, we think about the school children up there and the school mm -hmm. children in our own families mm -hmm. and the school children mm -hmm. in our own community. Right. We'll certainly pray for those people and before we end today. We're going to pray for you all and pray for those people. But we thank you all for being ministers of First Baptist Church. We appreciate that. Thank you. Now, I know that uh, Jesus talked a lot about helping other people. And uh, have you ever needed help by anybody? Have you ever needed help and didn't get it? How did that feel? It doesn't feel very good, does it? Have you ever helped anybody and you didn't quite know who you were helping? We all have helped somebody, even if we don't know it. When we offer a hug, when we smile and say a kind word, when we do very simple things, we can help someone know the love of God, can't we? Here at our church, we help people do a lot of things in a lot of different ways. There are a lot of things we do inside the church. We feed people sometimes. We visit people sometimes. We send cards to people. We have a whole list of homebound people that we minister to. The deacons call different families on a regular basis and ask them if they have any prayer requests, like we ask our ministers if they have any requests. Now, some people we work with are the kind of people that Jesus talks about, uh, like in our story today. Now, why don't we talk a little bit about this? Now the scene is in this story that Jesus is talking to a big crowd of people one day. And he was talking about what it takes to be saved, to get to heaven. And he was telling people when the time came and God judged everybody in the world, 
he would separate some. There would be some on his left and some on his right. And they would, the ones on the right would be like the sheep and the ones on the left would be like the goats. He said that there were two different kinds of people. Well, let's read that scripture out of Matthew. And the chapter is 21. And the verse is 21 through, I'm sorry, 25. And the verse is 21 through 30. Let me read it to you. When the Son of Man comes as King, and the, all the angels with Him, He'll sit on His throne, and the people of all the nations everywhere will be gathered before Him. And He will divide them into two groups, just like a shepherd she separates the sheep and the goats. He'll put the righteous people on His right, and the others on His left. Then the King will say to the people, now come on, all of you on the right. Come and be blessed, be gifted royally by my Father. Come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the beginning of all time. Because I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. The righteous ones, the ones on the right, the sheep, said, When have we ever seen you, Lord, being hungry and fed you? When did we ever see you being thirsty and when did we give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and when did we welcome you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison? And then Jesus, the king, replied, and this is what he said in his own language. He didn't speak English or even Greek like the New Testament is written in. He spoke a language called Aramaic. Here's what he said in Aramaic. I say to you, as much as you have done this to one of these, my little brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, away from me, you are under God's curse. Away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for all of you who didn't do what God wanted you to do. Because I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me any water. I was a stranger and you never welcomed me into your house. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was in prison and you never came to visit me. And, and they said, when did we ever see you like that? naked and thirsty and sick and in prison. And then Jesus said the same thing to them. Whenever you have not done all these things to my little brothers and sisters, you didn't do it for me. In the story today, Jesus says that we should feed hungry people and give water to those in need of clean water to drink. And give people clothes and care for the sick people. And do we do all that. But it's not just so we can feel good about ourselves. It's to make sure that God loves us, right? <laughs> no. God loves us no matter what. We do those things because, well, Jesus did those things and we are called to do the very same things that Jesus did. We're called to uh, give care directly to God when we do things for His children. What are some of the ways that you and I can help? Well, we can give food to a food bank. We can send clothes to a homeless shelter. We can send money to a project so people can have clean water. We can send cards to elderly people. We can even help with the hope boxes that our ministers have been telling us about. We can pray for those people in the hospitals. We can pray for the patients. But let's not forget to pray for the staff, the doctors and the nurses that work so hard to make sure that we're all taken care of. All these are powerful ways to help others in the same time serving God. Now Thessalonians has a verse. Paul wrote a verse a little bit later when he talked about this. And here's the verse that he talked about. Encourage one another and build each other up. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11. Encourage one another. The opposite of encouraging people is discouraging people. Encouraging people builds them up. Discouraging people tears them down. And we can do that 
with just our words and how we treat people. Paul reminds us of that in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. And that's our memory verse for this week. Encourage one another and build one another up. Don't just let this sit in your mind or inspire your heart, but put feet on these words and begin to encourage those around you, even in your very own home. Now, hope boxes are a nice way to build people up, but they're just tools, aren't they? God uses a lot of us as His tools to build people up. But He also created some animals that use tools like we use tools. I think of the veined octopus. You remember seeing those octopuses with all those eight legs? and They're not the prettiest animals in the world. But the veined octopus does something really interesting with some tools. First of all, he looks around the sea bottom to find two coconut shells that somebody has thrown out. It's just trash for them, and he's, there, he's found them. Well, what he will do is he will put one on his back and put one under his belly, and that's a perfect armor for a very soft-skinned animal. And when he gets up, when he has to go somewhere else, he will stack those two coconut shells like two bowls of water, and then he will put them in his belly raise his feet up, his eight legs up, and scurry around, stilt walking, and carry them to the place that he wants to go. Isn't that interesting that God created an animal like the veined octopus to do what they need to do, and he gave them the tools to do it. But they're not the only animals that use tools. You know in Australia, there's, uh, in a place called Shark Bay, Australia, there are bottlenose dolphins that use their beak to carry sea sponges and the sea sponges they use that to brush off all the sand so they can find the food under the sand now sea otters also use rocks as hammers they can crack open the abalone shells to get food in the inside god made animals to use tools to do their work but god also made you to do his work God wants you to encourage others and build them up to be the people God created them to be. Now, would you pray with me? Lord, I want to be useful in building your kingdom and encouraging your family. Help me to live a life that tells the world about you. We pray for all those who do not have enough to eat, who don't have enough to drink, who don't have clean water or shelter or are lonely in any way. We pray for those who look and look for ways to make your love and mercy present in their life. In the name of Jesus, who is always with us, we pray. Amen. Now, I want you to remember a little bit about how you can help other people. And I've got a resource that you can use. I was looking on the internet this past week for resources, and I came upon this one. It's called Lunch Doodles, and it's by a guy named Mo Willems. Now, it's about a 20 or 25 minute lesson on how you can draw crazy animals just by making your numbers, like your twos and your eights and your fives. Now, Mo has written several books using this particular method. One of them is called The Pigeon Needs a Bath. And then the other one is called, Let's Go for a Drive with Elephant and Piggy. But the one I like the best is called, I Really Like Slop. This is one video on YouTube, but don't try these recipes at home. Now, you'll know when you see them why I suggest you not try them at home. But just remember that resource, and they'll give you some craft ideas that you can do when we're through today. Until next week, I want to say... God bless you. And next week, we're going to see a different place that God is using in this church or the community for ministry. We're going to meet another missionary or minister couple and find out what they do. We're going to learn how God created the world to remind us how He works. And we're going to pray for one another and pray for God to be with us all. And then we're going to ask the question, as always, where in the world is Reverend Rod?